Hello everybody, it's Khalif PvP bring another MMO video. This time we're doing a video on Guild Wars 2. Yes, uh, essentially the MMO that started this channel. Uh, Guild Wars 2, I, I quit for uh, three years ago, I want to say. Yeah, three more than three years ago. I quit around, I want to say January or February in 2013. So more than three years ago, I decided to come back to it because Heart of Thorns was about 50% off um picked it up and man i've been having ton of fun for a game that's three years old the graphics the the play style and just the general vibe of guild wars 2 is surprisingly modern um i, I try to play for example rift and uh, sortor two games that i played around the same time and uh, th they seem really archaic when I picked it back up, but Gear Wars 2, it just still maintains its, uh, its uniqueness. So this video, I'm kind of talking about things that I liked and things I didn't like about Gear Wars 2 uh, after coming back to it. The first thing I like is that there are these new nodes in each, uh, each camp each tower and each keep and it kind of gets bigger and bigger depending on which one you're doing so for those of you that haven't played in a while this these nodes you essentially get crafting materials for example in this one i got our calcum out of it um and it's completely random so it's it's really good for solo players who are uh, capturing keeps or not keeps rather capturing camps capturing towers uh you can still gather while doing it The new map change, I also like, really like that as well. You know, they got rid of a lot of the water that was in the middle um, and kind of added this new new mechanism for the, the, I guess, temples, right? Before you had this orb that you had to carry around, but now there's this temple. I really like that because that makes it so that you essentially, a, a solo player, or at, at least, not, not really solo, but a group of people can capture this uh, this buff for your borderland before it was kind of you know big groups would have to essentially get that uh that orb put it in in a in a uh, tower or in another tower in a keep and then that team would get the the buff and then you know in order for you to claim it back you need to kind of attack the keep do all that mumbo jumbo but in this one you can be a small group of players capture three of these things and get the buff i really like that one because again it caters towards our smaller scale uh, people. The next thing I really like is these reward tracks and I like the fact that you can kind of pick and choose which one you want to quote unquote work on. And uh, yeah, I really enjoy it because largely, oh, I should actually activate this one, uh, largely because it gives you something to do while you're kind of, um, you know, doing World Wars as well. Before it was kind of mundane, there really wasn't any reason for you to solo, so to speak. You got those uh, those coins from killing things, but other than that, nothing too, too major. But with this, you can actually start uh, getting gear and getting other items just by World vs. World. I really enjoy the new uh, upgrade system that they have. So before, I, if I remember correctly, you kind of just spent money to upgrade your, your things, your towers, your keeps. But now, you essentially have to secure your caravan shipments. As you secure them, then you start getting upgrades. So if you want fortified walls and a waypoint, for example, you need to have 80 shipments of caravans in your in your tower or your keep. Um, what this does is, in my opinion, it essentially opens up where solo players can start capturing these towers, capturing these uh, these caravan depots rather, and contribute to building and upgrading uh, the keeps and towers. Another thing that I seem to kind of miss is the breakout mechanism. For those of you that weren't aware, or don't remember at least, um, breakout was essentially, there was a, like a, a general of sorts, an NPC that used to come up here, and after a certain number of players got around him, he would go and attack the first uh, tower. So it was kind of a mechanism for underpowered realms to kind of at least get a foothold. And what that was was, for example, a map like this where green owns majority of its uh, its things. 
this this NPC would kind of start up and lay down essentially stronger uh, siege on, on, on the tower and then kind of attack the tower. This doesn't seem to be happening lately. I think they took it out. Um, so yeah, so like right now this, this Borderlands we're kind of un, uh, underpopulated as well as getting our asses handed to. Um, but there's really no way for us to recall this until like a pin comes onto map. Next up is these, uh, I get Ascended Gear. Um, I, they didn't, I don't think they existed when I was playing, but they've definitely increased the, the stat points. For example, uh, the Crystalline Band, uh, it's kind of very equivalent to the Ruby or Calcum Ring, which was pretty much maxed out uh, back in the day. But right now it's 126 power, 85 position, 85 ferocity versus 90, 64, 64. So it's almost 21 more position, 21 more ferocity, and about 36 more power. So you can see, kind of, you know, doubling this, you you'll get much higher uh, damage output. So somebody that's coming back, I know when I first came back. I was one getting used to the the dodging, the skill animations, etc. In addition to that, you kind of have to deal with the 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 gear difference. So now let's talk about things I don't like. Uh, the first thing that I don't really like is this new kind of skill unlocking mechanism. It's kind of like a circle, and you just go around. Um, so before, you just pick and choose what skills you wanted to unlock, and each of them had a cost. You went around, gathered hero points, and you unlocked them after you met the cost. What that meant was, at, even at lower levels, you could really just start having fun with your build. Like, you know, maybe you figure out your build's not working, we want to switch around a build, etc. Uh, with now, how it works is you're essentially in this circle, and in order to unlock, let's say, like, uh, Procession of Blades, you first need to unlock um, everything that comes before it, right? So what that means is, you know, if for somebody like me who wants to, let's say, play a build, uh, who really just wants Procession of Blades and doesn't really care about anything else, I have to unlock everything. So it kind of feels a little limited, uh, a little kind of... Uh, you know, very un-Guild Wars-like to, to, to me at least. And uh, so yeah, that's kind of the first things that the new mechanism I'm, I'm really not a big, big fan of. So this pretty much wraps up the video, folks. I've been having a ton of fun playing this game. The negatives that I kind of mentioned are so minor and they're far outshined by the positive changes that Erin has done that it, it really is almost a non-factor. If you do find Heart of Thorns on a sale, do pick it up. I think it's a fantastic addition to the game. I will, however, reiterate much of what the community has said. I don't think it's worth $60. If you do find it, maybe half off. In my price range, I would put it somewhere around 45 to 50 uh, at the high end. I think uh, the best positive is probably anywhere from 25 to 30, uh, 40, $40. So if you do find it in that range, do pick it up. And overall, I hope to see you guys playing this game. It's, again, ton of fun. So until next time, it's Khalif PvP.